been a couple key uh, spots on these on these demonstrations that have been removed. So if you're that guy in the basement with a singing light bulb, don't throw fruit or anything like, like that at me. But the, the idea here is to show you how legitimately easy it can be if there's not a layered security defense model in place. Okay, so what's the methodology? First of all, we want to profile our target set, identify what available services we're going to see, find one or more canned exploits. Anybody have an idea? Of there's, the, there's a name for people that do this. Script kitties. Script kitties, absolutely. You don't have to be good to be a hacker anymore. You can simply look for the services, find what operating system you're on, and Google yourself into being the greatest hacker on the planet. <laughs> Did I just say Google yourself? Yeah, all right. Never mind. <laughs> so you try them all, see what sticks. Eventually, time is on your side. Right? Eventually, you'll find most likely an exploit that you can use. Once you find the answer to one system, it's very likely you can radiate and take control of other systems as well. Okay, so here's our target. So the attacker, we're, we're going to send all of these different, uh, this is basically a, uh, a port scan. Find out what, what we can find. Port 22 and port 80. Anybody? Maybe those guys in the hall. What's that? SSH, FTP, HTTP. and HTTP. HTTP. Very good. The uh, FTP packet's going to get killed. The port 80 packet, as you imagine, if this is a business, we're going to allow web traffic, right? So that web traffic is going to come back to me. So we're going to have a payload. Well, first of all, we're going to have an, an, an exploit. And then within that exploit, I'm going to drop the payload that I want to, I want to set inside this server. It's going to come back to me. I'm going to establish a tunnel. Eventually, I'm going to be, going to be able to circumvent the firewall and take control of the remote box. Um, it's interesting to see how we, we switch places in the virtual machine, but I'll, sh I'll show you that in just a second. So now this machine here, C drive here actually becomes a C drive on the other side. I'll show you how that works. So we go out on the Internet and we look for the exploits. Right? Remember, I'm, I'm looking for an exploit first. And then I'm looking for payload. What did it uh, allow me when I first did, did, did the scan? It allowed me port 80, right? So that, that's kind of what, what I'm looking for. Uh, Warforge doesn't exist anymore, by the way, so don't try to Google for Warforge and see what you can find. It's not out there. Okay, so we do an in-map. These are all, all, all of the services um, that we're going to find. You can see some of those things there are open. This is the one I'm specifically after. These are your op kits. Console, Metasploit is probably one of the most popular ones out there. You, you can Google this and find it. It's still out there in the wild. So now I'm in the MSF prompt. This is the Metas, Metasploit, uh, Metasploit framework. And these are all of the exploits that come within this little script. Right, right there. So far, what's this cost me? Time, nothing but time. So, uh, just because uh, it's it's very popular, um, chances are the printer overflows and the buffer overflows are always very popular, simply because the the patches for those things seem to be out for six months, and nobody ever does anything about them because they think, who's ever going to hack that? Well, they didn't really count on my team, did they? Okay. So we're going to use the IIS 5.0 printer overflow exploit. So when we type that into the Metasploit framework, show targets. There's my box I want to uh, compromise. It shows up as a target. So I'll set that target to zero. Now the options within, within this particular exploit. So you see what I'm doing here? I've launched the exploit. Now I'm in the middle of this exploit. Which one do I want to use? What are the options that I want to try to run against that? Um, so we want to try to do a remote host. My objective here is to take control of the other box. So it's just simply an R host program. So we'll set the R host to the target. Show the payloads that are going to go within that. Uh, that's going to be the bind. So we can set the bind shell, which is a very fancy way to say remote control. Now that I have all this set up, framework, Overflow, bind. I'm going to run a check to see if this is even going to work. 
And right now it shows me that this box is actually vulnerable. Exploit. Off we go. Thank you very much. Trying Windows box, blah, blah, blah. There's your IP address. I am now on the remote box. How long did that take? Not very. This is kind of like watching, um, you know, CSI or something. You know, there's a, uh, there's a stakeout, and the, it's only an hour program. So what you see on, this, on, the, on, on that 12-hour stakeout was really, uh, they have to show you in like 10 minutes. Um, so that's kind of what you begin. And, and magically, everything I try here works on the very first time. Um, so it's not exactly indicative of, of the actual time. Nonetheless, uh, I'm going to set a net use command because I'm on that box, right? So what, what I want to do to actually stab, establish the connectivity is I want to take control of my remote box and then I'm going to map a drive back to my machine that I'm actually sitting at. So that drive, the one I'm sitting at, becomes the remote. It becomes E. C drive is the one I, that, that, that I just took over. Make sense? I'm getting some dog watching television look. <laughs> okay. RCA dog. Anyway, <laughs> nothing. Okay. All right. So when I do a directory of C, it's showing me what's on the remote system. Is the point. C drive is my remote system. That's the system at at, at my target. So I'm th seeing things like internet publishing directory. I'm seeing things like data. Right. This is where I want to go. So I'm going to make a directory for hxdef. Anybody? That's my rootkit. What does that mean? That means I can completely own every service within this box. So I'll copy my rootkit over. I will copy a index HTM file, right? That's my splash page when I go to a website, right? Into the www root directory. So when somebody pulls up their website, this is what they see now. And Bohico was actually one of the uh, groups, we had this conversation earlier, was one of the groups that um, my forensics team went in that uh, had, had exploited a, an internet commerce company. Ultimately ended up bringing the, the, the company down and within about four or five, six months the company was completely out of business. Um, so that's kind of significant to me. So if this is your internet banking site or if this is your you know, e-commerce. This is the site that your customers want to see uh, when they come to learn about your product. Um, this doesn't really say a lot for your company, does it? What's this cost me? Is this on? What's this cost me? Time. Time. Exactly. Okay, so now I've got the customer database. This is pretty easy. I'm just simply copying that from C back over to my remote box. So now I own your customer database. So any good hacker worth their, worth their salt is going to cover their tracks. Right? We don't want you to know that I've, that I've been there. Um, so we're going to run the cover my tracks program, the CMD exe file. Run that exploit. Actually, that's where it kicked me out of the shell. I'm going through this pretty fast. So after I run, run this portion of the program, where did the directory go? It's gone. It doesn't even show up anymore. And there are no services that show compromise right there. So even your network administrator does not have the ability to see that I still own this box. I, ha I still have a remote shell active on this box right now. I still have a drive mapped out of that network. Circumvented the firewall to do it. Does it scare you a little bit? Sir? Um, you think it's showing that uh, system messages, in the system messages on the Windows <coughs> box that you're compromised now, mm -hmm. wouldn't it show on that, on the system messages that are being generated? Uh, part of the uh, exploit 